This is me as a kid. I was about 11 or 12 years old. At the time when these images were taken, I was going to school every day. I had on the surface a normal life. But since I was a young child, I was being raped by my father. But it got a lot worse as I got older. My father is a Freemason. I was taken to a lot of rituals in central London, in the Grand Lodge, or sometimes more locally in the local area where I lived, which was in Richmond, Teddington. What was the main way in which the Freemasons abused children and you specifically? The main way was rape, but the worst ways were using your hand to kill another being. What was that abuse? Just so that we can then understand what you're acting out here as children. I saw a little boy being murdered by the Freemasonic group. And in this particular ritual, which is in the Grand Lodge in London, I've talked about it in other videos, there were many little boys. I saw how there was rape in different rooms of the Freemasonic building where the little boys and me were taken into rooms and raped by these men. And this boy... He was lying on the altar and then they made each little boy in turn come up and stab him with the knife in the heart to kill him. Why do you think they did that? To have power over you so that you won't speak out. So in this footage that we're going to see, there is footage that includes your father, who was the man who took you to these Freemasonic lodges and participated in rituals in which you were abused together with other children. What is your intention with this video? And what is your intention in showing your father in this video? I hope this video can help people identify children that are being abused in order to help those children find support and help. It's especially important to see the ways in which children play. By playing, they often show what's happening to them, actually. Children who've faced extreme violence They are masters at hiding what's been done to them because their life depends on it. I also wanted to talk about my intention in making this video, and that is I do not want any more children to be abused by the Freemasons. I do not want any more children to be abused by their fathers and for those around those children to ignore what is being done. The man who you see in this video, Arya's father, who is an abuser, who is a member of the Freemasons, is not the only member of the Freemasons, is not the only abuser. In fact, my experience in England would indicate that, in fact, this type of family situation is not unusual in England. So our intention with this video is not to single out this individual for attack. It's to demonstrate to others the signs that children show when they're being abused, and also to make it clear to other Freemasons that when you abuse children, you will be exposed. Those children are not scared of speaking out against these men. I don't want to live in a world anymore where this is permitted and where it's covered up. So my mother was actually filming this and me and my friend had planned the film together and how we wanted it to be shot and all the different elements and the storyline. You've talked to me before about how what you and your friend act out here is a way of you processing a ritual in the Freemasonic Lodge in London in which you saw a little boy killed. Yes. So this is my friend. She is playing the murder victim. She hears a noise, so she goes to the door and she's shot. You've shot her. I've shot her, yeah. In this reenactment, you're playing the role of the murderer, which is a role that you were forced into as a child with other children, it sounds like. Yes. So at some of these rituals, you were forced by this Freemasonic group to commit acts of violence on other children Yes. in order to traumatise you. As a child or as a normal human being, you feel immense feelings of guilt and disgust and horror because you feel responsible, you feel like you have committed this murder and it's the, the worst feeling in the world to be carrying around. And it's impossible for you as a child to realise that you were not the murderer, that it was the group, that it was the people who forced you into that position. So you see me, the murderer, going into the house and into a cupboard. I mean, I'm wearing a long black robe, black gloves, my face is covered... This was exactly the sort of attire that the Freemasons would wear in their rituals. So in this opening scene of the reenactment with your friend, you are dressed as the Freemasons were dressed in the rituals. Yes. So in a sense, you're both showing how it was that they appeared. You're processing the trauma by assuming the role of the aggressor in order to understand and process what it was that happened to you. Yes. 
I go into the cupboard. The cupboard, again, is a really important part in the house because in this cupboard there were loads of shoes in different bags. In the shoes he was keeping a lot of drugs which again were administered to me in the ceremonies to further increase my confusion and disorientation. So he hid the drugs that he was using to sedate you before you were taken to the rituals in which you were abused and mm -hmm. raped and tortured. He was hiding those drugs in the shoes, in the shoe cupboard. What Do you know what type of drugs he was using? Wants to sedate or wants to make you alert. I go into a bag and I open it and inside is a document and on it is written the testament. I think the word the testament is very apt because I feel this is a testament to what happened. This is an account of the truth, the testament to me as a child. This is showing a detective who's looking into the computer. I was again never actually normally allowed access to the computer. My father had a lot of pornographic films on the computer, images of child abuse. So this outline of the body on the floor and the blood on top of it, you said do you understand this now as your means of processing as a child what was happening in these rituals. Yes. So you've described how a little boy was murdered through the forced participation of other children in that murder, coerced by the Freemasons yes. at the Grand Lodge. In London? Yes. Not some small local lodge, but no. the Grand Lodge. The Grand this isn't lodge. some tiny splinter group of the Freemasons. No. And this Grand Lodge, it's connected to the, the establishment, the government. Prince Philip, for example, is an extremely high-ranking Freemason. Prince Philip, of course, husband to the Queen, father to Prince Andrew. We now know a man who rapes, trafficked yes. children. Yes. Prince Philip was also best friends with Jimmy Savage. As we've described in a previous video, Prince Philip was patron of the camp where I was ritually abused, called Outward Bound. That camp, Outward Bound, and the group Outward Bound was under the directorship of Jimmy Savile. You can look this up on Company's House. Jimmy Savile was the director of a group of camps. And to return to this scene here, so there's a lot of blood on the floor, and you and your friend, playing the roles of detectives, are attempting to determine who it was that committed this murder. There's blood on the hands, which again... There would have been blood on the hands in these ceremonies, yeah. So in the film, this is kind of a normal thing that detectives would do is, is take pictures for evidence of what's happened. This is specifically related to my experience of abuse because many of the abuse experiences involved cameras, taking images of me as a child. So I think this is a repetition of this form of abuse. So typically photographs would have been taken of you as you were being abused or other children as they're being coerced to participate in the torture of other children. And now you, in reenacting it, yeah. are the one taking the photos. I remember being in the attic when I was a small child and my father took me up there and took photos of me naked. But it's interesting because I hadn't heard that from you before, but my father also took me and my sister into the attic to take photographs of us. The more I learn about your experiences as a kid, Aria, the more I discover how similar so many British families are. And it's not surprising given who the royal family are. Mm. It's interesting how those who are at the highest levels of the social hierarchy in the UK, their behaviour mm. and their abuse of children is mirrored Good. in the abuse that's committed by those throughout Hello? the society. Yes. So you and your friend have acted out collecting what? evidence. Yes. Uh, your friend just took a swab of some blood. Yes. You can see how uncomfortable I look in this part of the film. Here I'm talking to my mother. The first thing I do is wipe my hand across my face. This sort of gesture is repeated quite a lot in the film and it seems almost like a mask that I have to wear when my mother is present in the room. I seem a lot more compliant. I feel really strongly like I'm showing our relationship here, as in I was being manipulated by her. She had so much control over me. You can see my discomfort. I'm restraining one hand. I'm doing this because I feel so anxious. I feel incredibly anxious. Otherwise, I think I would probably just shake or make random movements because of fear. You're restraining yourself. Yeah. And also protecting myself. I've got an arm across my body, which is a very protective move. But uh, she was interrupted by the second shot, which penetrated the heart. She said penetrated the heart. It's quite violent language word penetrate as well and when your mother says penetrated the heart it sounds like she's describing there what it was you witnessed at the freemasonic lodge children being forced to penetrate the heart yeah. of a little boy yeah you can see as well i'm nodding a lot looking at my mother a lot 
This again was something that children are taught to do in quite violent households where you have to show so much respect to your adults that you look very compliant a lot of the time because that was forced upon you. Because of the structure of British society, you were constantly looking to your mother to let you know whether everything you were doing was okay. Because if it wasn't, there would be a threat of violence. Yes. It's also interesting because the UK has a monarch, a queen, who many people look to for approval. And if they don't get approval, there is a risk of violence. So it's interesting that there's a relationship between the British family in the house and also the overarching British family, the royal family, the nature of hierarchy in the British establishment, yes. how it operates on two different scales inside your family yes. home, but it also operates yeah. in the wider society. If you think about the Queen's speech every Christmas, many families watch this and nod along and say yes to it, just like I'm doing to my mother or the national anthem, how we sing along. British national anthem is fascinating because it contains the lines, God save our gracious queen, long to reign over us. An entire nation gleefully sings along with the notion of it being ruled over <laughs> by a monarch. It would be funny if it wasn't so sad and tragic. Mm, mm. And these are the same people who are desperately seeking something they think is sovereignty. Mm. You can't have sovereignty if you have a sovereign. You cannot have personal freedom if someone rules over you and you sing gleefully, inviting that person to reign over you, long to reign over us. In watching this footage, I'm also brought back to my own experiences of London and growing up as a kid, so there's certain emotions and memories that are rising up for me. But one of them is the strange ritual of chanting this national anthem and the strange reverence that we gave to this old lady in a gold hat who was on every banknote. It's a very strange cult they've got running over there. The very definition of a cult is you have a single charismatic leader who rules all reigns over you. We now entered back room of the house. This is where my father had his study. So at this point, in your reenactment of this crime that's been committed, you've walked into the back room and mm. you're questioning your father. Both yes. you and your friend are playing the roles of detectives and your father is playing the role of a suspect. Yes. And I imagine that as children, this is probably what you wished could have happened, that two detectives could have come into the house and questioned your father. Yes. You begin to question your father, your friend takes photographs of him, or acts out taking photographs of him. So I think this scene is very interesting because we have a situation that I think many children in England wish could have happened as children. They wish there had been detectives who could have come into their house and investigated what was being done to them. But of course, in England at the time, and still now, we know that Two-thirds of British police officers refuse to answer the question, are you a member of the Freemasons? Two-thirds. One of the highest-ranking Freemasons is Prince Philip. So you effectively have a secret police force running within the existing police force. And so it's very hard for any children who are experiencing abuse mm. to speak out and be heard. The majority of police officers mm. who turn up if a child requests help will be part of the occult group abusing children. Yes. And the Freemasons, who are represented by a checkerboard pattern, have their logo wrapped around, wrapped around the heads of British police officers. That logo was put there, the checkerboard pattern was put there by Percy Silto, who was a prominent Freemason who designed the police uniforms. I mean, you sort of wonder, what is it going to take to wake people up when you literally wrap the logo of the Freemasons around the heads of British police officers. I'm very confused about British society. I'm very confused about how it got to the point where the Freemasons, a secret society, are in control of law enforcement. Just to return to this scene, you're questioning your father. My friend is showing an image of the body and the wounds. Like you're saying, it would have been my dream to have had detectives that come in and, and ask questions about what's happening. You see that my dad looks at the camera and you can see that it's just purely dead behind his eyes. And it's important to see that my mum was filming this part, so he was sort of communicating with her. I don't know what he's trying to communicate. To me, it looks like the look that your father gives the camera, and the camera is being held by your mother, is a kind of a knowing arrogance. Yeah. He's looking at the camera and saying, I am in control here. Mm. I know what's happening. Yeah. He thinks you're stupid. Yeah. But to me, looking at this footage, I think you're both very clever children mm. because you're acting out what it is that happened to you. You know that your mother is making a record of it and perhaps you know that at some point in the future you'll be able to get this footage and use it as a means by which to help other children. I think so. I think we were actually very aware of what was happening and how we knew as well that through the power of play and through fantasy, we were able to tell the true story. And we knew that this was a good way because adults don't understand this language. 
Whereas actually for people who are connected to themselves, it's very clear. Okay, so in this scene, we're acting out going to a gun shop as the two detectives doing their investigation. So you're in a gun shop? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, would you like to look at the, um, I've got a Kalashnikov no, here, or the Colt 45, or the no, Luger no. semi-automatic? We ask about different guns and my father reels off like a whole list of different weapons. Again, I don't think this is normal standard knowledge. It's very specific gun knowledge. And I think like you're saying, it shows his arrogance and feeling that he just won't get caught. I think it's very revealing that your father lists a series of guns quite quickly to you and quite nonchalantly, yeah. as if this is knowledge that he's quite familiar with. It's mainly just showing what a dangerous person he was. He was living in a world where he knew about weapons and how to commit crimes and how to cover it all up. It's a kind of, he was living in this dark milieu of drugs and violence and very important Freemason. You know, he was I guess had a lot of power in this underground world, yeah. Hmm. So this is the last clip up until this point, I've been so clear on what I'm trying to communicate as a child. I think I'm very aware of showing who did the murder, pointing the finger at my father because he was leading Freemason and involved in all these crimes. He was perpetrating the crimes. He was organizing the crimes. But for me, the play is real. I'm depicting what's happening in real life. It's not a play to me. But at this point, you see me right at the end. You see me laughing when the detective says the name of the murderer. Because I know at this point, my true emotion comes out and it seems absurd. It seems ridiculous to me that this is the murderer. When I know who the murderer is, it's my father. It's not this random made up name. I wanted to ask, you in reality mm -hmm. have reported to the police the activities of your father mm -hmm. and of these Freemasonic groups. Mm. And what has happened? Basically, nothing has happened. They pretended to start an investigation. Ultimately, they said they will not continue with it. They will not continue with it. You see, at the end, I'm led out. I'm the guilty one. I'm charged. Yeah, me as a child, I'm led out. I'm going to go to prison, which is basically how you feel as the victim. You're the one that is sentenced. It's already a life sentence to carry around the pain, the terror of what happened to you. But that is literally what happens now as well with our reports to the police. We're the guilty ones the whole time we were treated as suspects in the case. When you have a secret society running a police force headed by Prince Philip, who we now know was associated closely with Jimmy Savile, ran a network of camps called Outward Bound at which children were raped and abused. Prince Charles, very close friends with Jimmy Savile, was marriage counsellor to Charles and Diana, had intimate access to all of the royal family's properties, among other properties. We also know Prince Philip's other son, Prince Andrew, rapes sex trafficked children, supplied by Jeffrey Epstein. This is all public information now. When you have a police force in which two thirds of those in the police force are members of the Freemasons, headed by these people, this so-called royal family, it's not very surprising that when a child or an adult reports the abuse of children, that the members of the police force turn the survivors into the criminals. It's almost got to the point where it's become ridiculous. If you report the abuse of children to the British police force in connection with the British establishment, then you become the criminal. Instantly, you become the criminal. Because the British police force and the Freemasons are effectively the same group. 